VCE Further Mathematics 2019. Seems like a long time ago. But in the Further Mathematics exams, uh, you can see that red stripe that represents a question that students found really difficult at the end of the matrices section. So we'll have a look at that question on transition matrices. And also in the exam too, there was some really tricky matrices questions too. Remembering in these charts, the blue questions are the questions students did well, and those red questions are the students are the questions that students found really difficult. So let's have a look at a few of those hard questions. This was the last question on the matrices module in exam 1 2019. We have a transition diagram which talks about the number of aeroplanes um, traveling from Sydney to Melbourne or Melbourne to Sydney etc. Now it's a particularly hard question and actually only 15% of students got this right. So there's five options. If you were randomly guessing, you would expect 20% to be getting that right. So you can pause the video and have a read of the question if you like. The key statement here is of the planes parked at Melbourne Airport on Tuesday, 12 had been parked at Sydney Airport on Monday, which was the, the night before. So how does that, how does those 12 planes come into the diagram? Well, that's from Sydney to Melbourne. So those 12 planes represent 0 0.48 of the planes at Sydney Airport. So that would actually let us solve for that variable S, and we can find that S is going to be 25 planes. So there's always 25 planes parked at Sydney Airport. So that's good. Now we need to find the number of planes at Melbourne Airport, which is always M. So we can use the other side of the diagram and set up an equation for M because 0 0.8 of those Melbourne planes return to Melbourne. And we already know that 12 of the Sydney planes go to Melbourne. Now that's always going to be M. So that transition to the next night would also be equal to M. And we could either solve that straight on the CAS or do a bit of rearranging by hand to find that m is equal to 60, and that would give us the total number of planes at the airport, which is 85. So as I said, only 15% of students got that question correct. Of those more than 600 visitors, the first 600 can stay, but all the others would have to move to location G. And the question is, to determine this matrix B1, which is this uh, matrix that's going to be added on to move those visitors. So if we go back to our state matrix we had, and those 810 people, only 600 can stay. So what happens to the rest of them? Well, the, the um, 300 and the 580, they don't need to do anything. But the 210 who need to move from location A have to go to location G. So this matrix B1 has to reflect that change. So it's going to be uh, moving 200 from location A to location G. So there's not too much calculation involved, but there's quite a bit of interpretation and understanding of what this whole question is talking about. In part two, well, we just sort of go one step further and we want to do state two. Okay, so the same thing, we had uh, state one. And now we're going to apply the transition matrix again. So we can just multiply that out on our CAS calculator. And then we need to consider what's going to happen to those people who are more than 600. So again, that, that matrix B2 is reflecting the fact that only 600 can stay. In each location. So we can see in this case it's actually two locations with more than 600 visitors. That's the, I can't remember which one is which now, but at the top one, the 786, and the bottom one, the 644. So we need to move all of those people to location G. So 186 need to move from the top row, and 44 need to move from the bottom row. And that's going to give us a total of an extra 230 going to location G. So that then we can work out um, the state matrix R2 just by adding those two matrices. 
Well, obviously, that's not a simple question. And the success rate for that question was actually uh, less than 15% even. So don't stress too much if you're finding that difficult, but feel free to watch the video again. Again, it's really just understanding uh, the question and then applying the transition matrix to reflect what's been described in the question.